Welcome to Willer in Training Boat Handling Tutorial Series. This series of videos is not a substitute for hands-on tuition, but will give you an introduction to the techniques used on a boat handling training course. In this video, we're going to look at descending a broad lock with another boat alongside us. We're approaching a broad lock just ahead. Uh, it's hard to see on the video, but uh, I can see that the lock is set in our favour. Uh, however, the gates aren't fully open and uh, I need to put my crew member off. So on the right hand side there at the lock landing, my intention is, is to put him off at the stern. Certainly I have a real preference for putting crew off at the stern. I, I've got more control over them rather than putting them off at the bow. Uh, there are some times, of course, with short lock landings where you don't have any choice. You need to put them off at the bow to get them uh, safely on the towpath. As you can see, I'm gradually reducing the speed, and uh, once my stern gets cleared of that moor boat, I'm going to put it into forward gear and bring the stern across toward the lock landing. Once I am clear, then putting it into forward gear, moving the tiller across to bring the stern in, and then back to reverse gear again. I don't want to be going too quickly once I, I touch. In fact, I'm really aiming to be at a standstill. If anything, I've done that a little bit too harsh and we're coming in a bit quickly. Um, my crew member isn't going to put his body between the boat and the side, but he can just fend it off by hand. If the lock was set against us, then we'd be checking for any boats coming the opposite way, where they could get benefit from the lock being empty. In this case, it is full and therefore I know it's not going to take my crew member very long to open the gate so there's no need for me to tie off. It's about uh, getting the timing just right with this and understanding how long it will take for the crew to open that gate so that I arrive at the same time. It's uh, using the time efficiently. done one of the many checks behind and in fact uh, I can see there's another boat coming toward the lock so let's concentrate on getting ourselves alongside first of all and then we'll uh, we'll help them to come in with us. Uh, there's a controversy about whether you should open both gates even on a broad lock and surely enough on a, a windy day I'd be very keen to open both gates but uh, on a day like this where it's fairly calm and I can be assured of being in control of the boat position that I would be happy just to have one gate open. However in this case, and as quite often happens, the other gate is swung open anyway so I can be a bit generous with my positioning. Slowing it right down now, the intention here is to give my centre line to the crew member uh, so that he can take it round a bollard and that will give me some control over the position of the boat ready for the second one to join us. In reality, there'd be nothing wrong with me stepping off with the centre line and taking it round the bollard once I brought the boat to a standstill. Crew member now will bring the loose end back to me, and uh, and I can take hold of it and have some stability whilst the second boat comes alongside. Now we're a considerate boaters, so crew member now is walking round the bottom gates and has opened up the other gate so the second boat can join us. Equally, not wanting to be idle, I've tied the boat off whilst I close the, uh, the near side gate. Uh, when I say I've tied the boat off, of course, with the centre line, I, I haven't tied it with a hitch, I've just wrapped the line round the bollard a couple of times and that's enough to keep it into the side while the second boat comes in. I now don't need that line anymore, so a quick flick to bring it off and then I can call the line up and put it back where it belongs on the, on the cabin roof. My crew member now has moved to our side of the lock. It's normally best practice to do that so everybody knows what everybody's doing. He's looking back at me now, and when he's about ready to go, I give him the thumbs up that I'm okay, that the uh, uh, I'm safe enough now to descend the lock, 
and he begins to lift the paddles. The main thing I have to watch for now as we descend the lock is to make sure that my stern is clear of the sill which is just behind us. The longer the boat of course then the more attention you need to give to this. Uh, Peggy is only 50 foot so there's plenty of room in the lock and you'll see I know by instinct just how far away I am from the sill and haven't looked back yet. Unlike many narrow locks, there's not a lot of surge going on in the lock. Just a little occasional use of forward and reverse gear is enough to hold position. Once the lock's completely empty, then the crew members can open up the gates. We've got two crew members and we've got two boats in the lock, so both gates will be opened. But uh, I'm just indicating to the boat that we're only going to go through this one lock and then we're going to wind and come back up the lock. Normally the process is the first person in is usually the first person out but in this case we're inviting the other boat to go out first. As the first boat moves out of the lock there will be some boat effect on our boat and it will tend to draw our bow toward his stern but I don't want to select forward gear just yet otherwise we'll be going out together which isn't actually bad practice um, we often use that to go out at the same time and uh, provide there aren't any obstructions like bridge arches and what have you it's a safe way of two boats leaving a lock all the paddles now should be pretty much closed and once we're out of the lock then all the gates will be closed as you would do with any lock and there you have it approach and descent of a lock alongside another boat